Okay, so in this plum pudding model, again, you would expect that the, the alpha particles would go um, essentially interact very weakly with, with each alpha particle might interact very weak, weakly with, a, with um, an atom because of the diffuse plum pudding model and therefore essentially all the all the alpha particles would come through and would um, hit the screen essentially along the same direction from which they came and you would expect no um, alpha particles that would be deflected at large angles okay but what did they see what they saw was that about one out of every eight thousand um, alpha particles was actually deflected by an angle an angle greater than 90 degrees where where this here would be 90 degrees okay and so they saw they saw um, a, a really strong deviation from what they expected from the plum pudding model again plum pudding model was sort of the prevailing model of the day this was a workable model there was at the time no evidence that that would refute it and this is sort of what people had in their heads as the most likely um, model for the structure of the atom. Okay, and so they did these. Um, Geiger, Marsden, and Rutherford did these experiments. Saw some very, very different results from what they'd expected, and um, and quite frankly, they were stunned. Okay, so Rutherford has this famous quote attributed to him, which I'll just read now. Um, that shows how, how surprised he was. He says, It was quite the most incredible event that has ever happened to me in my life. Talking about the observation of these alpha particles scattered at large angles, that is greater than 90 degrees. It was almost as incredible as if you fired a 15-inch shell at a piece of tissue paper and it came back and hit you. On consideration, I realized that the scattering backward must be the result of a single collision. And when I made calculations, I saw that it was impossible to get anything of that order of magnitude unless you took a system in which the greater part of the mass of the atom was concentrated in a minute nucleus. It was then that I had the idea with I the idea um, that I didn't copy down that quote right. Um, it was then that I had the idea of an atom with a minute massive center carrying a charge. Okay. Um, and so he, it's important to understand that the reason why he, he realized this is that if we think about the collision between two rigid uh, objects, like two particles, two, let's say two billiard balls or two, two marbles or something, if you have the particle which is coming in playing the role of the alpha particle, um, if that particle is much heavier than, um, than uh, the particle that it's colliding with, then, then the heavy particle can't bounce backwards. It can't. It can't. Uh, it cannot um, scatter off at an angle that's greater than 90 degrees. It basically continues uh, its forward motion and gets deflected only by small angles. Only if you have a. Um, only if the particle which is initially at rest, let's say, is much larger much heavier, more massive than the particle that's traveling, playing the role of the alpha particle, will you will you be able to get scattering greater than ninety degrees? Okay. This is just a classical physics result. Okay, and this is what this is what uh, Rutherford realized was that this this must mean that we have um, that the nucleus that there is some sort of compact nucleus where uh, where charge resides, positive charge, and that that is basically what's uh, what the alpha particles are colliding with in order to achieve um, these large scattering angles. Now, not a lot of them scattered that way, but they could, they showed that it was they showed that it was um, more than a statistical anomaly. Okay. So with this work, Rutherford basically had just discovered the nucleus. He had um, and this obviously paved the way for um, a, a succession of other models that uh, more accurately described the charge di distribution within the atom. In particular, the, the Bohr uh, model, uh, which sort of treats electrons as planets.